Hi, my name is Sam Hendrick, and I'm here from Bentley Systems to continue our conversation talking about MicroStation Connect Edition and a 3D world. We're going to take a look at two 3D view controls. First one's going to be walk, and that one's going to let us walk through our model, as the name implies. And the second one's going to be called fly. And as the name implies, it's going to let us fly through our model. When we're done talking about that, we're going to touch on rendering, and then we're going to get into saved views in a 3D world and in a 2D world. We're going to continue working in the workspace called Examples and the work set called Metro Station. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. In this video, as part of a series about introduction to 3D modeling in MicroStation Connect Edition, we're going to be looking at some of the view control tools and rendering. So we're going to be going and opening up one of the files that ships with MicroStation from the example workspace in the MetroStation work set. The file is called Visualization Master. I'm going to click and open this up. Now once the file opens up, you can see I'm obviously in the 3D model and you can see I'm in a rotated perspective. When you set up to do a walkthrough or a fly through, one of the things you need to do is have a camera set up. Now, there's two ways to go about doing this. One is you can set up a camera, which I'm going to show you how to do, or you can just apply a camera to the view. So the first thing I'm going to show you is just how to apply a camera to the view. If I go up to my view controls, you're going to see there is the perspective and I'm going to hold the left button down and you're going to see some options here. One of them is called normal camera. This doesn't have an extra wide lens or a telephoto lens. This is just a standard lens. When I click on this, you can see the view changes slightly. I now have a camera applied to the view and this is going to allow me to do the walk and the fly through. Now the other way to do it is for you to create a camera and that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to do a view previous. That's what it looks like before. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now when I do this, I'm going to set up a camera and I want to position the camera where I want to begin my walkthrough and my fly through. So what I'm going to do is go up to my visualization workflow, if you don't have it selected already. And then I'm going to come over here to camera tab and I'm going to select place camera. Now on my tool settings window, the options are disabled at this moment because it's looking for me to select the view that I want to place the camera in. That's being displayed in the status bar in the bottom left. I'm going to left click anywhere in the view. And when I do that, the standard lens option becomes available. Now I have an option to set my camera height or I can use AccuDraw to define it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this option to set my camera height. And I'm going to set the camera height to 1.5 meters. And I'm going to move my cursor over one of the elements here that is of the deck. And then I'm going to data left click. I'm seeing that AccuSnap finds that point. Now it's asking me to define the camera target. And that's going to be the doorway here for the escalators. When I select that, I now see that is my camera view. Now that's one way to set it up. You don't have to, you could just apply a camera view, but then you would have to rotate your view around so that you get in position to begin the walk process. Now that I have my view set up, I'm going to go to my view controls and the icon I'm looking for looks like a couple of feet and it's called walk. I'm going to click on that. Now on my tool settings window, I've got several options here. Now I've got an option to set the camera height if I wanted to do that. Also, I have an option up here to select an element to uh, basically lock the path on. In this case, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dynamically moving my cursor to control this. Now there is a checkbox here that says accelerate slash decelerate with mouse. So my mouse is going to be controlling the speed at which I'm going forward and backward. And you can also set your walk speed there. In this case, I've got it set to 12 kilometers. What it's looking for me to do is basically select the view. So I'm going to data any place in the view and my cursor jumps to the center point and you're going to see a small little dot here. Now, as I move my cursor in relationship to that dot, this is going to control my movement. So as I move my cursor up relative to that dot, I move forward. And the farther I move it away from the dot, the faster I go. And as the closer I move it to it, the slower I get. And if I move it below the dot, you can see I'm moving away. I'm going to move it back to the dot 
And if I wanted to go to the left, I just move my cursor to the left. Again, the farther I move it away from it, that's the acceleration. So you want to make sure that you're not moving it too quickly. Small movements to get adjusted. Again, focus on that dot because that's the point at which you accelerate or decelerate. Now I'm going to move my cursor up because I'm pointing in the direction because I plan to walk around the escalators. Now as I move my cursor up, you can see I'm accelerating. I want to make a slight turn, so I'm going to move my cursor to the right a little bit. And you can see I'm moving to the right. And I'm going to move it back over the dot because I've centered my walk. I'm going to move it a little bit more to the right. And if I want to slow my walk, I move it down. Or if I want to increase the speed, I move it up. And then I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I'm going to make a turn here. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the right. Again, very small movements. You don't want to make great movements because you're going to just flip around. This is very much like a video game. And I'm going to go ahead and make a turn around here like this. Now, one of the things this walk method doesn't allow me to do is that it doesn't allow me to go up the escalators. So as I move my cursor over here, you can see there's the escalator. If I was to move towards the escalator, I'm going to go ahead and do this. You're going to see that I'm just going to go straight through. I'm remaining at this elevation in the model. I'm just going to go right through the elevators as if they didn't exist. And now I pop up on the other side. So that is the walk tool. I'm going to go ahead and press reset. This takes me back to my start point. So that's walk. Next tool we're going to look at is called fly or fly through. So this is right next to it on the view controls up here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that icon. Again, on my tool settings window, I've got options here. I've got my fly through speed. I'm going to reduce that fly through speed a little bit. I'm going to make it down to like eight kilometers per hour. And again, I have an option to choose a path if I wanted to, if I had a path element. Now, again, it's asking me to select the view that I want to fly through. So I'm going to data anywhere. And as I do this, you can see that speed is constant and it's moving. I'm not controlling my forward motion. That's my fly through speed. So as I move my cursor left and right, I'm going left and right and I'm remaining horizontal relative to my view because what I don't want to do is go up or down because then I'll go up through the ceiling or down through the floor. What I want to do is go up the escalator. So I'm going to move myself towards the, the escalators. And when I get here, this does require some practice. So as you get to that escalator, you're going to want to slowly move your cursor up, not too quickly, and then move it back down. So you're maintaining that L elevation. And as you're going up, and then as you get to the top of the platform, I'm moving my cursor down. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the left and come back around. And you can see now I'm going back and I'm at the different elevation. And I'll be going down these platforms or these escalators. Again, as I move my cursor up, I go up a little bit. And as I move my cursor down, I go down a little bit. So you're going to want to make small movements. So now I'm going to be going down the escalator. So I move my cursor down, not too soon. And then I move it down and I'm going down the escalator and I've got to move my cursor back up. And there it is. I'm going to bump my head on this. I'm going to go around, make a left, moving my cursor to the left and then moving my cursor to the right. And eventually I work my way back to the starting point here where I was at. So I'm going to go ahead and end this by doing a right click, a reset. And this takes me again back to where I was. Now I'm still in the tool. So if I don't want to do this again, I want to make sure I exit the tool so I can press reset or the right button again. And that puts me back into my element selection, the tool I was in before. So that's the walk and that's the fly through. And the one caveat to that is that you got to make sure that you have either a camera view uh, set up that you defined or you have turned on the camera view as uh, a view attribute. Now I showed you the option of turning on the camera up here, just setting it to normal. It takes whatever your current perspective is and just applies a camera view to it. The other way to turn this on or off is from your view attributes. So if I go up here to my view attributes, on my view attributes dialog, First column, number four item 
is camera. I can turn this on or turn this off. So if I turn this off, you can see I don't have a camera perspective. If I turn it back on, I do have the camera perspective. We're going to go ahead and close this out. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to render. Again, my workflow is already set to visualization, so I don't need to do that. On the visualization workflow, I'm going to go to home. And there's going to be a tab called rendering and there's render scene right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this. Now this is going to show me prior renders that I've done. So I did a render earlier of a different perspective, different camera view. Um, so this takes a minute, but on the setup dialog for rendering in the upper left corner, you have your lighting settings. So right now we don't have a custom lighting setting. So it's using whatever my active lighting settings are. And then I have the environment set up. And then I'm below that I have my render set up. Now these can be set to basically give you a draft view, something quick, renders quickly. But when you're done and you're ready to really create a, a high quality photorealistic render, then you'd want to change your rendering setting to something like interior good or interior best. Now this will take longer, but the product will be more photorealistic. And then here's the render icon right there. So if I was to click this, you would then see the render happen. Now I'm not going to do that because I've already done the rendering here. Now to show you some of the other renders that I've done in the bottom left corner, there's a previous Luxology rendering and I'm going to click that. And then here's a prior render. And it's really nice. You could see the reflection off the tile floors there. And if I do another one, this was another render that I had done from a different camera perspective. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the render dialog. When you're working in a 3D world and you're setting up a camera view or you're rotating the view just the way you want it, a real good practice to get into is creating what's called a saved view. This isn't unique to 3D. People can do this in 2D environment too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, and I have it on my visualization tab as well as home or drawing tab. I'm going to click on the view tab and then you're going to get an option over here, a tab called saved views. And I've got an option to create a saved view. I also have an option to open up the save view dialog. If I click that, you're going to see in this model, there are two other saved views already here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply one of these saved views. I can do that by selecting it. And then there's an option there to apply the save view. You can also just double click and then just click the view and that applies the save view. And you can see my view perspective has changed. And if I look at untitled, I double click on that and then click in the view. You can see I get a different saved view. Okay, time to take a short break. I promised you I'd talk about how to create saved views and then use them in a 2D file. Well, that's what we're going to do now. If you're in civil engineering, I think you'll particularly like this because I've got an alignment file. It's about six and a half miles long. I have about 10 intersections that I need to do work on. And what I'm going to show you is how to create a saved view and then how to use them to jump around from intersection to intersection. So let's take a look. What we're going to be doing now is demonstrating saved views in a 2D file. I've opened up the civil engineering drawing. It's an alignment. It's about six and a half miles long. Along it, there are about 10 intersections that I need to work on. I'm doing ADA ramps. I'm going to be creating a save view for each one of them. First, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a save view. Then I'm going to show you another file where I've already done 10. To get to my save view dialog, I can go to my drawing workflow, which I'm in, the view tab here. Now in the save view tab, save views is right there. There's a save view icon, and then there's also a little open dialog icon. I'm going to click on that. This opens up my save view dialog. The icon to create a save view is right here. Now the first save view that I want to create, I want to give them names and I want the names to be the intersection. So I'm going to double click here. I'm in element selection, double click on the text. You can see it shows up. It's junction 18 Palmdale road. I'm going to control C copying it to my clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and hit reset, dismissing it. I'm going to tell my station I want to create a save view. So I'm going to click the save view icon. On my tool settings window, it's looking for me to give it a name. This one's going to be 01. 
space, and then I'm going to paste in from my clipboard, control V. Now it wants me to pick the view. I'm just going to data, left click in view number two. I now have a saved view. It's pretty straightforward, simple. It's a permanent part of the file. Now to see the advantage of this, if I zoom out here, let's say I, I want to go to that intersection, I can just select this. There's a apply save view icon or even simpler, you can double click and then data in the view and it takes me right to that spot. Now we're going to take a look at a file that already has this done. So I've already done it. I'm going to click on my model previous. You can see my saved view dialog here. You can see all my named saved views. And I gave them a 0, 1 in the beginning because this is going to be the order in which I want them listed. If I didn't do that, it would order them probably by alpha characters, and that's not how I want it. So I want to go to this first intersection. So I'm going to double click data in the view. I'm there. Now, if I wanted to go to Mojave Drive, I double click. I data. I'm there. Now you can choose from a list up here on the tool settings window because you're in the apply save view. But this is a quick way for you to get around. I can just click again, applying a different save view. So save views can be very powerful and it also is great to show other people in your work group where you want them to go. You can do a save view, tell them later, go to the save view, apply it, and it takes them right to that spot. So hopefully this is helpful. Enjoy. So what did you think? Do you like them? Hopefully you learned something. Save views in a 2D world can be extremely powerful. A lot of people I know have been using MicroStation for a long time, didn't know how to apply them. Hopefully this is a way you can use MicroStation save views to navigate around in your 2D drawing. Now back to our regular scheduled programming. So save views are extremely helpful when you're doing different renders because you want to set up a render of a different perspective. Instead of you having to set up a camera view each time you plan to render, having a saved view already set makes it really handy, very quick for you to produce multiple renders of the same perspective using different settings, different render settings, things like that. So hopefully this has got you excited about working in a 3D world and navigating around, creating the model. That's going to be the biggest challenge. But if you can open up some of these example files, this can get you comfortable with navigating around. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.